Hello YouTube RJ. Hey, got another big box on the bench. Yeah, you know it. Couldn't stay off eBay. No matter how hard I try, it's getting bad. Seen another little, not so little piece of equipment that the price is right. I couldn't stand it. I thought it would be great for the lab. So I bought it. So let's take a look at what I got. First of all, I got to get in this big box. Some cleaning. Get this box out of our way so we can can play. RJ, what the heck have you bought now? Well, let me tell you what I bought. This is a Genrad. 2220 bug hound and you might ask what the heck is that well I'll tell you what it is is it is a piece of equipment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the best way to let you take a look at this thing let me just turn it this way a little bit what this is is a piece of equipment and my understanding is its primary area where it was used is on, you know when they used to make TVs in America, make radios, make all kinds of electronic items? <clears throat> One of the primary places this was used, from my understanding anyway, is that they would produce the product and every once in a while there'd be a bad circuit board or whatever and it, it maybe had a short, maybe it had an open. It would be pulled off the line and sent to a bench for a technician to look over and try to repair and get working. The purpose of this was a tool to help them find that. And so it has multiple purposes. It's got a very sensitive microvoltmeter in it that scales to 50 microvolts or 500 microvolts. And then it's got a continuity checker that's very, very sensitive. And then it's got a signal tracer built into it. So you've got kind of three devices built into this. And so what the purpose of this was, was to allow you to trace, you had you had your wand, you had your probes, and you had your injection clips. So you can inject signals into your work with this and then trace that signal with this. So it's, it's a signal tracing device, but it's also got a very sensitive microvolt meter in it and ohm meter in it. And using this, you could trace down through the board and it was sensitive enough to actually follow traces. Like you can do with a six and a half digit multimeter or seven and a half digit multimeter. The way that you can, it's sensitive enough to see if you're, you're closer or farther away because of the resistance of the tracks. This will do that. <clears throat> so that's what this is for. So I think it's, a, it's gonna be a interesting addition to the lab when we diagnose electronics and try to figure out you know, what's wrong where something's wrong. The price was right, $40. I couldn't pass up on it. I had to put a bid in and try. So I'm going to take a minute and clean this up. I didn't get a manual with it, but the manual's online. I'm going to print off a manual. So I'm going to take a few minutes, clean this up, print the manual. I'll come back. I'll talk a little bit more about it. And then, uh, you know, we'll see if we can't find a place in the test rack to, uh, to put it. So give me a few minutes and uh, I'll be back. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, I'm back. I've done the best again of cleaning this thing up. It cleaned up pretty good. I polished out the plastic. Everything seems to clean up pretty good. Found a few things we're going to have to deal with, but I wanted to get into the manual, talk a little about what this is all about. But one of the things we're going to need to do is clean these probes. They work, but they have corroded on the ends to the point that they don't make instant contact every time. So I'm going to clean those up. The other thing I found after a thorough inspection was the micro clips on the injector. These things are absolutely shot. The little, little metal pieces are broke off and bent. This one doesn't even open. Can't even get this one open. So they're going to do us no good. So I'm going to go ahead. The next step is looks like they've been patched along here a few times. I'm going to go ahead and come back to here. I'm going to patch new ones on. Put brand new ones on there. 
before we do a lot of testing. It's kind of interesting design. Notice how this metal comes up and there's a gap in here. And I thought that's an odd design, but what I didn't realize is the probes run down there to the back and tie around this bar back here. Come back up and clip in up here. So anyway, uh, I've turned it on. It does turn on, makes an interesting little moan when it turns off. So let's talk about this device, what it is, what it's for. The manual, I, I was able to find the manual online. It's 30 pages long. I can't, I can't even correctly staple it. I had to staple it as two books. You know, the old days, they gave you a lot of information. Gives a lot of accuracies here. The thing about this thing is the accuracy isn't really what you're looking for. You know, like the milliohm or a microohm meter, you're not looking for a super accurate microohm meter. You just need repeatability because remember what you're doing is you're tracing a track down. You don't care if it really is this, this many microvolts or that many microvolts. You just want to make sure that as it's going down, you can see it, or as it's going up, you can see it to trace the trace. It claims a 20% of full scale minus 10 microvolts. Not exactly super accuracy. Uh, it has a range of 50, 0, 50, positive 50, negative 50 microvolts, and a range of the same thing for 500. Input impedance is greater than 100 ohms. Differential protection of the probes is plus or minus 15 volts, so you don't want to get on a high voltage board with this thing if it's powered up. The idea is you do it with the board powered off. So the DC current source in this can provide 1 volt DC maximum open circuit. It's got 10 milliamps plus or minus 20% into a short circuit. The current sensing probe has a source drive signal of a 600 kilohertz plus or minus 20%, one volt peak max into an open circuit, 20 milliamp peak to peak square wave into a short circuit. Here's what they describe in the introduction. The Genrad 2220 Bughound is a small benchtop instrument designed to aid in the determination of a physical location of a printed circuit board short or open circuit and certain types of component failures. Several techniques can be used to achieve this end, depending on the nature of the fault. The Bughound is most compatible with an illogical extension to digital logic circuit test systems. Goes on to say that it finds shorts and opens, faulty ICs, the 2220 has three basic modes of operation, a signal trace mode, a connectivity mode, and a multi-volt meter mode. The unit is self-contained and supplied complete as a benchtop instrument. So it goes on to describe the three different modes. The signal trace, it injects 600 kilohertz signal and you trace it as you'd expect. Connectivity mode is just that, connectivity like on your multimeter. The microvolt meter, has a zero center meter with full scale deflections of either plus minus 50 or plus minus 500 microvolt. You short, basically you short the two nodes that are shorted and it allows you to follow the trace and see the resistance falling off to follow, follow the branches and get to the location where the short is to show you a short or an open. So that's what it does. It goes into a lot of information. It goes in, you know, it's the old manuals in the old days when they really told you, the company sat down and told you all about it, how it's built, how it works, how to use it. It, it gets into, I'm going to read this and I've only briefed it a little, but I'm going to read it in great detail. It's just an interesting piece of equipment. Uh, here they're showing the current trace probe and how you inject a signal and follow it. Connectivity mode and how you use it. I mean, it, it goes into great detail. So anyway, we don't have time for this obvious to, to dig in. The video would be two hours long. Nobody wants to sit and listen to me read all that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a few minutes to fix some things. First, I'm going to do something with these micro clips. So give me a few minutes to cut these and solder some new ones in, and I'll be back. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and clean up these probes to get them nice and clean. I might tin plate them actually afterwards. I get these ready and then we can try this thing out and see if it even works. So I'll be back in a few minutes. I really hate to use up some brand new clips but I need to fix these so we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and clip these off to where I can use them. That's going to be my replacement clips. I'm going to go all the way back to here. I believe I've got the length about right. I do. So let's go ahead and clip these off. And 
And that's it for those pieces of junk. Always shrink your ends first, then go into the middle. Once they're shrink on, they can't slide, so then that pulls your shrink wrap tighter. If you've never been told that, I know that I used shrink wrap a long time before somebody said that when I was around. I felt dumb. It seems like it's very intuitive, but sometimes we don't think of things like that. But if you shrink one side and start moving up, the other side will pull away from where you had it. If you shrink one side, it binds. You shrink the other, it binds. Then when you shrink this, it lets it pull tight instead of just letting this side slide up and not get real tight. So your shrink wrap will shrink tighter that way. So just a little tidbit, a little interesting thing to know. Okay, and with that, we've got new clips on here. Let me clean up this mess. All right, so I've cleaned the device up. I did a quick check out. I found that continuity worked, but not great because these tips were so dirty. Hear that? So what I've done is that fan, that uh, heat gun will shut down in just a, in a minute. It's cooling down. What I did is I took some Scotch Sprite and I worked these really hard to get the corrosion off of them so that they make good contact now. So every time you touch, you get good contact with them. And I may or may not put something on to try to help from corroding, them growing back up again. But you see, you can hear it. Now you the mics, you'll hear it. Continuity works great. There's also an earphone jack right here if you want to put an earphone in and, and work with it. So that section works. So let's try the signal tracer. So if you got the signal tracer, imagine that you've shorted this across the circuit on the circuit board. As such, it's running through the circuit board. Basically what you do is you put this on signal trace. There's two LEDs here. I'm hoping you'll be able to see on camera. Who knows if you will or not. And tells you which way to the LEDs are, this one says go this way, go too far, it tells me go that way. So that's how the signal trace part of this works. So you know how the continuity works, you know how the signal trace works. Now the micro ohm meter is just what it says. When you put this into micro ohm meter mode, these clips carry a very low amount of current. And I'm going to try to replicate a circuit here. See, see if we can... It's probably not going to work. Let's try it though. I'm going to clip one here. On the solder here. I'm going to clip one here. Hang it off. And what we're going to do is... I'm going to go to the 50 micro ohm. I'm going to put one probe here. And I'm going to put it down here. Okay, it's full scale, so let's go up to 500. Still full scale. Solder's such a good conductor. Getting closer. I'm almost too much short. Guess what? There we are. So if I'm over here and I, I'm falling along a circuit and I get to here and I keep going, it gets it goes away, but I come back here and I start going this way. So let's go down to the 50. See how sensitive it gets then. See it's pegged out all the way till I almost get to it. I can get right down here. I'm on top of it before I start seeing. So go back to the 500 and you can see what happens. 
pegged out there. I move a little farther. Move a little farther. Move a little farther. Oh, now I'm down to four. Oh, I'm getting closer. 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 I'm right on top of it. Look at that. Now I'm on top of it. It's like, okay, I'm getting so close. It's hard for me to tell. I go to my 50 microvolt. Now all of a sudden I'm pegged out again. Now I can start working my way. Okay, I'm starting to get closer. Okay, here I am right close. Three. It's reading three now. Now it's reading almost two. Two right there. Oh, now it's two, one and a half. Down, down, down. One now. Now I'm barely registering. I'm right on top of it. That's how that section works. So that works that way. Signal trace works like this. I can trace all the way back, all the way back to the meter. It works. That's exactly how this piece of equipment works. You got a volume here to control that on and off, like I said. Neat piece of equipment. I can see it being handy. There's an adjustment here to zero, like when you put it on micrometer, okay? You can zero it right here. You use a non-conductive screwdriver like most of these meters. You put it in here and turn a little here, and as you can see, I'm centering it out right there, okay? There we go. That's actually it. This, this is what this is. I think it's going to be a neat little piece of equipment to have around when you run into those boards, you buy something that doesn't work and you're trying to trace it down and it's, you're struggling with it. I think it's going to be a great piece of equipment. It's not the latest and greatest. Uh, some of this you could do with a high-end multimeter. Obviously the continuity. Um, you can trace circuits to microvoltmeter because they're that sensitive. If you're using a very high-end like a six and a half or higher, six and a half digit or higher meter, but not for $40. So I've got this. It's nice to have this type of equipment around. This stuff's disappearing. And if you're not aware of it, used test equipment on eBay is going through the roof. You rarely see stuff for a reasonable price anymore. You know, six and a half meters, digit meters that for repair that used to go for a couple hundred, you know, a hundred to two hundred dollars. Now they're wanting six and eight hundred dollars for those things. It's like, really? I can buy a new Sigilant six and a half for like seven hundred and fifty. So that's it for this video. I hope you found our new little toy interesting. I did. That's, again, the Genrad 2220 Bug Hound. Hopefully we'll get a chance to use it some in the lab and you'll get to see it actually in practice. So, hey, thanks for tuning in and checking out my new toy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got a little entertainment, a little education maybe. That's my goal. I hope to see you in another video.